All right, so our next speaker is Xu Lu from North Carolina State University. I hope I got your name correct. Uh, Fine-grained analysis for parallel programs running on ARM-based clusters. And we are seeing your screen. Uh, I think we have your video. So when you're ready, oh, perfect. Now we have the uh, presentation view. Yeah, OK, great. Uh, okay, thank you for the introduction, and uh, I'm very happy to be here to show some uh, my recent research on this uh, fine green analysis uh, on the ARM architectures. So we developed a tool called the Dr. CDT Prof. So here are some motivation. So as we all know, that the ARM-based chips become more and more popular, and not only available in the smart devices, but also in the emerging cloud and the supercomputer systems. Uh, and also that's the, the ARM ecosystem become mature and there are so many different applications there and in the entire software stack. So there is a demand for the performance tools to analyze the applications on this cloud and the HPC systems based on the ARM architectures to guarantee the high code quality. So we focus on this perf performance tools and also know as the profilers. So there are some existing profilers on ARM. So they mainly be, uh, categorized into two types. One is the core screen profilers like the ARM map, the Linux perf, and some HPC uh, tools like the Tau, Skalaska, and the HPC toolkit. So uh, these tools, they, uh, they typically incur very low overhead because they rely on some hardware counters to collect the, the performance data. Uh, but uh, but they 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 probably produce some lossy information because they uh, they use the sampling techniques. So these tools they are suitable for uh, analyzing the hardware software in, uh, interactions uh, in the inefficient way, and uh, uh, so so they are widely used. And also there is another type of the tool uh, as the known as the fine grained analysis tools. So uh, representative tools like Vagrant. Dynamo Real and the Dynast, all of the three can work on ARM, so they can monitor uh, individual instruction execution uh, for any programs there. So because they can in instrument every instruction execution, uh, their overhead can be pretty high, uh, but they can provide some microscopic insight into a program and uh, they, they can capture every, uh, every instruction. So there's no loss of information. So they are more suitable for analyzing the software performance only, and also some cracking spikes like the data arrays, memory corruption, something like that. So uh, in my work, I mainly focus on this, the fine-grained analysis tools, and uh, we find that uh, existing fine-grained tools uh, do not provide this the ubiquitous calling context information. And also these existing tools, uh, it's very hard to use, especially for the domain experts, because uh, they're more de uh, designed for the for the two developers. Even for the two developers, they still have to um, uh, to uh, to code a lot, uh, put a lot of effort to make a tool uh, in the practical usage. So so we plan to bridge this gap uh, to provide this ubiquitous calling context information and also provide a good user interface that's uh, to make this fine grained tool more widely used. So let's first see what is the calling context and why it's important. So here is the example to, uh, to show what is the calling context here. Uh, for example, that I, I'm interested in the, in the instruction at line 24 here. So only showing me that the at line 24 is the instruction is uh, sometimes is the, uh, it's not enough. I would like to know that how this line is reached from the main function. For example, in this, uh, I know that main function calls P calls A and uh, this line 24 is, is inside function A. Then I know this call, calling context. I can get more semantic information from the program execution. So, uh, so this calling context also known as the call path, call stack, backtrace, something, yeah, they, they refer to the same thing. And uh, they are widely used in the performance tool and also debuggers. So they provide intuitive analysis that for the uh, for the users to really identify the problem inside your your program. So here is the overview about the Docker CCT prof that we develop. So we uh, we built this tool on top of the, the a fine grained analysis tool that's more real, 
And uh, uh, so it works on both x86 and ARM, but here I mainly focus on the ARM architectures. So uh, this tool monitors the unmodified, fully optimized binary executables on ARM, and it can provide the ubiquitous call path collection. So this means that uh, you can collect any metrics and uh, associate these metrics with any instruction within their calling context, with their full calling context. And also another way is that they can, uh, this tool can uh, collect the ubiquitous object attribution. So this means that once you analyze a memory access and you can, uh, so this tool can, can help you to identify which objects this memory access is touch touch. So this can be, uh, can provide some unique insight for the memory profiling and also memory debugging. And also another feature is that uh, uh, it has, uh, this tool has a good programmability because we make this Dr. City Prof as a uh, framework. So we implement all of this core functionality in this framework and uh, we expose a minimum set of the APIs to the users. So the users can devise uh, a, a client to a top of uh, a top Dr. City Prof. So this, uh, they, they just need a simple, uh, a couple, uh, well, I'd say a uh, hundred lines of code that's to get a usable uh, fine green tool. And also it has the uh, increased moderate overhead because this is a fine grained analysis. You can imagine that we, we potentially uh, study every instruction execution. So the overhead typically you can think it's high, but I will show that we use, uh, we, uh, we, we get moderate overhead and make it suitable, suitable for large execution in the cloud and the, and the, uh, and the clusters. So here is the, uh, the overview of my talk. And first I would like to, to show that how we compute this the ubiquitous uh, call path. So here is the a straightforward way that we get the call path, right? So for each of the instruction, and the, we can determine its call path either from the cause like a winding or from the, from the, from the debug information or right? something like that. And we can have a, a bunch of call paths there because you can imagine how many instructions you executed, right? Billions of instructions there. And uh, for, so, for this a large amount of the call paths, how can we organize them in a compact way? So actually we just use some existing approach. So uh, they, uh, this approach uh, mer merges the common prefixes of the call path. You see that the function A and the function B and C, they are common prefixes. And we can merge them that's into a, a tree structure. So this cause the calling context tree. So Dr. City Prof also uses this calling context tree and also constructs this calling context tree in the per thread uh, mechanism. So this, the, uh, this can largely reduce the, the synchronization overhead across the threads. So, uh, so typically it's the, we know that the, we, if we want to get, get this fine green call path using the cost stack on one thing is, uh, uh, it's not feasible because that's the, the overhead can be really, really huge. So instead of doing the cost like one thing, we just use this shadow cost like mechanism. So, the, so the, the idea is pretty straightforward. That's from the main function. Uh, uh, once we see a function call, uh, we, we just uh, uh, insert this callee as a child of the function main there. And we maintain a, a cursor because the context. So, uh, so this context, uh, this cursor always points to the function that you are currently in. For example, here it's in the car, uh, in the function p. So inside the function p, it can call another function a, right? So we can uh, further move the cursor down and insert the function a as a child of the function p. So this is we monitor the function call instructions. So we can achieve this, and uh, inside the function a, that's all of the instruction inside the function a. Uh, you can query the, the, the context cursor to get its calling context in a constant time. So uh, once that you return from the function A, that's so it go back to its, uh, to its caller, right, to the P, to its parent. And then once you call another function D, for example, it will move to the, uh, to, to, to the function D as another child of the function P, okay. So this is can also like to go back and forth that's eventually built up this tree. So there are also some, uh, something that we need to take uh, into consideration uh, is that once we, inside, we investigate all of the children of the function P, 
we need to make sure that we can have a fast lookup mechanism. Why? Because function A is inserted as a child of function P, and later A can be called again, right? It's either from a loop or it's just called in a different call set in, inside the function P. So this means that we need to check that why the, uh, whether A is already inserted or not. If it is inserted, we just don't have to insert this again. So because this profiling, right, this profiling provides you the compact aggregate view for all of the A, B, C, D. So, uh, so we just use a split tree as a data structure to organize all of the children of a single node. And uh, so this split tree can just uh, rotate itself to make sure that uh, it can guarantee some faster lookup, for example, like this. So from the highest level, so you can see that the, the, the calling context tree collected by Dr. C.C. Prof is organized using this B node and IP node. So B node, it represents the basic block node. It represents a basic block because every instruction inside the base block uh, have, has the same behavior, right? So they also have the same, same uh, calling context. So we just organize them as the B node. So, and also underneath the B node, we have all, uh, all the IP nodes that represent individual instructions there. So, so using this uh, structure that we can largely reduce the overheads introduced by this, the, the calling context tree. And also with this, uh, with this tree, it's easy for us to query for the call path for any instruction. For example, I want to know the, 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 the call path for this uh, IP node uh, marked in, in yellow. So it's just to have a backward traversal of the tree. We can just guess the full call path. So it's pretty easy. And uh, so uh, we also can attribute the cost to the uh, data object. So as I said, that is particularly useful to analyze the memory performance. For example, we have, the, we have the, this code on the left, and we start from the main function, right? And the Dr. CC Prof will eventually reduce the tree and also identify the the call path for the alloc for the malloc for the data allocation. So, so you can see that the, this is the malloc's call path. And the later, there is a memory access that touches the memory ranges, the memory range allocated by this malloc. This Dr. City Prof will link this memory access to the data allocation. Okay. And also it can monitor the global data or the static data. So using its name to uniquely identify that from the single table. Then if this memory access touches the, uh, touches the, the global data, we also link to the global data as well. So this means that if this memory access, one can always query that which memory range allocated it touches, okay? And also that we focus on this, the easy interface because that we want this to be what do you use right, to bridge the gap between the, the low level fine grain tool with the users? So here we just provide four core APIs for people to use. So like the, you can see that we do a initialization that can initialize the Docker city prof. We can get the context handle. So this one can, uh, using this handle, you can get the full call path actually. So this is, you can think this is a handle to get the full call path of any instruction. And also we get the data handle. And if this is the memory access, it, you can, uh, well, we can get the, the, the data objects that this memory access touches. And also there is the, some print instructions there, a print API there that can help you to manipulate the call path and uh, visualize this call path there. So uh, here are some uh, evaluation uh, and, uh, I would like to show. So uh, the, uh, the machine that we evaluate is on, the, uh, on AWS and we choose this Graviton2. Uh, so uh, on each of the instance of the Graviton2, uh, we have 32 cores. And we are, actually, we also test on other architectures like the Raspberry Pi, Jetson, Thunder X2, and uh, the Fuji2's uh, A64FX. Uh, so, uh, but here I only report for the Graviton2 because uh, for other machines that we test later. Um, and uh, for the workload we choose for this evaluation is for using the NPB, the NAS parallel benchmarks. So we evaluate both the MPI programs and open, open, open P version. So for the MPI, we use the four instances of the Graviton 2 for totally 128 processes. And for the open P, we just use one instance with all, all the 32 threads there. So we only evaluate the, the overhead. 
So uh, first I evaluate the code centric overhead. So remember code centric means that I only collect the, the ubiquitous call path for any instruction, only the call path, the, no data centric part, no data object information, only the code, only the call path for every instruction. So you can see that for the MPI and open P program, the runtime overhead is just the two X to four X, something like that. So remember that this for every instructions call path, okay? Not selected one, all the instruction call path. So two X to four X, the overhead is pretty affordable. And also the space overhead is mainly introduced by the calling context tree maintained in the memory. So for the open P is 1.2 X and MPI is higher, it's like almost five X. And also we, introduce, uh, we evaluate the data centric overheads. This means that for every memory access, I query the data object it accesses to. So, so the, you can see that the runtime overheads not increased much, it's still like three X to five X, something like that, because we use this shadow memory approach, which uh, provides a quick lookup. But this shadow memory approach uh, sacrifice some, some uh, memory space because it needs to uh, uh, need to shadow every byte uh, inside the memory. So the overhead is kind of like 10, 10 X. So actually we also provide another implementation that can trade off the runtime and the space overhead using the, using the, the, the hash map and it can, it can reduce the space overhead but increase the, the runtime overhead a little bit. Okay. And also we have this, the real application overhead there, uh, not only the micro benchmarks, we also evaluate the real applications like the LAMPs and the Swift 3D, they mostly work on the, the MPI programs there, so uh, MPI processes there. So you can see we evaluate 16 instances, totally five, 12 uh, MPI processes. We also evaluate this, the GORMAX, this is MPI plus OpenP. We also use 16 instances with the 128 processes and four threads per each of the process. So you can see that the overhead is also pretty for, affordable, like the, from the 5X to 7X, and uh, yeah, the memory overhead for code centric is not, not really large. So for the data centric, yeah, so as expected, the memory overhead a little bit larger and the time overhead is also pretty affordable. So I would like to show a, a demo here uh, because I said that we would like to make the tool pretty uh, usable and we would like to have this to uh, to give the uh, people an easy interface to use and also an easy GUI to interpret the data. So we develop a simple client that counts the, all the number of instructions that the uh, uh, insights you are a given program and also gets the call pass for all the instructions. Okay, so, uh, so let me first show the, the, the GUI and the, uh, of this. So we provide the Lulash. Okay, we provide the Lulash. And this, we, uh, this client only use 20 lines of code that can, you can count all of these informations and get the call path. And also outputs as the, in, the, in the realization. So we integrate our GUI inside the VS code. So you can see that the, uh, this is the VS code and you can, uh, you can just uh, open that using the flame graph uh, view and it counts the total number of instructions uh, frequencies there. And uh, it show you the full call path there. And the, because this is the open P program and the small one, most of the state in the, in the, in the weight, in the barrier part. And also that if you see some, some useful work and if you click there, you can map back to the source code and you can see that the number of instructions executed there in the full call path. Okay. So not only the top down view, we also provide this bottom up view that reverse the, the, the calling context tree. So you know that if uh, a function is called from other call path and which call path is problematic. So it includes both the inclusive metric and the exclusive metric. Also, we provide this flat view. This gives you the hot files, hot functions that you want to focus on regardless of the call path. So if you say that, oh, I'm not familiar with the flame graph, uh, we also provide you the tree table view that is compatible with the HPC toolkit and the VTune if you are more familiar with those tools. So it also provides the top down, bottom up and flat view that show you all the information that you collected. So you can see that is the, uh, this show you the bottom up view showing that barrier, where this barrier is cut from that in the call pass give you the, the weight in the most of time. And the flat, flat view show you the, the different files that how much time it consumes. So I, I want to show you a very simple client tool that's counting the number of instructions. Actually, if you de de develop a more sophisticated client tool that 
the GUI can also easily show that. So to illustrate some idea that we, we also have some tools, while some of already available and some there will, uh, will be available in the short term. For example, that's the one of the my major research areas about redundant computation. So we already developed some uh, redundant computation tools uh, in some published in some uh, major conferences like the dead stores, silent stores, silent lows, and redundant zeros. Some uh, all of this uh, focus on the HPC applications with some uh, redundant or useless computation. The, that's this from the fine grain analysis to identify. And also that we also identify uh, develop some some client tools to identify the multi threading efficiencies like the true false sharing, a uh, new effects. Well, this will be particularly uh, useful for the Fuji Shoes machine because it has the NUMA effects. And also heterogeneous memory placements, right? So you have the, the HBM with the DRAM or DRAM with the NVRAM that can be used for there. And also that we have uh, identified some memory inefficiencies like the computer risk distance uh, on the arm and also uh, some identify some memory access patterns to improve the memory performance. So, and also performance bugs like the memory corruptions, buffer overflows. Uh, for example, or some concurrency bugs like the data race. And also we are actively working on some emerging features for the Dr. City Prof, why is the GPU support? We would like to uh, integrate our GPU fine grain analysis as well that into this Dr. City Prof so we can support the, the analysis across the, the ARM plus GPU platforms there like the Jetson, right? And also some some other architectures with the, the, I think I know, I already know that's not some Thunder X2 plus the NVIDIA GPU, this kind of architectures. And also that we not only focus on the native, uh, native binary like C, C++ and Fortran, we also go beyond some, uh, some runtime based languages like Python and Go. So uh, we, uh, we support our two also on those. So this can broaden our application domains we can apply to, right? It includes the machine learning and some web, web servers. And then that's how I would like to conclude my talk. So here's the Dr. C prof, right? I would say that it's the first fine-grained call path provider framework for the ARM binaries. So it, it strongly supports the, the a variety of, of analysis tools and the incurs moderate uh, memory and time overhead. So that is can, uh, can be applicable to large scale executions there. So uh, Dr. C Prof is open source, so you get there and the, it, under MIT license, so it's free to use. Okay, so it concludes my talk and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Awesome, thanks for your uh, talk, Shu. So I, I did have one question, but I was actually gonna ask about the, uh, the license and modifications. Um, of the code. So MIT looks perfectly fine. I can download that and use it. It looks very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, this is until make the make this license pretty loose. Yeah, everyone can use that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, it looks like a very flexible tool. Um, so anybody have any other questions for Shu? All right, awesome. Well, Thank you. Uh, thank you again for your talk.